So a very common situation in machine learning, pattern recognition, is that you have a continuous random variable that depends on a discrete random variable. So x, for example, is one of a set of discrete classes, whereas y is a continuous number that depends on what class I'm in. And so in that case, what I have is what I would call a class conditional PDF, which is basically, again, we use f to talk about PDFs. And then I'll be really kind of explicit here, where again, y is some continuous number, x is some discrete number, right? And so um, let me kind of define that, and then we'll do a quick example about what that means, right? So um, again, to really define it, we have to go through the, this is like the CDF, right? Capital F means CDF. This is the probability that y is less than some value, given that x is equal to xk, which is basically the probability that both of these things are true over this probability, assuming that this value exists, right? And then the PDF that I'm looking for is just the derivative of the CDF, okay, just as before. So let me do a, a, an example to make this concrete. So a very common example in um, electrical engineering is some communications channel with noise, right? So I have, for example, a binary um, signal. This is what's coming through with um, each with probability one half. Okay. So this is clearly a discrete random variable. And then what I get on the other side is what I sent through the channel plus some noise, where n is Gaussian with zero mean and variance sigma squared. Okay. And this noise is independent. Of x. So here we're starting to use all of the terminology that we've been developing. Okay. So I really realize that my microphone is over here. So it doesn't change things too much. So now um, what I want to do is I want to find the class conditional probabilities, assuming that x is minus 1 and that x is plus 1. So each of these is going to be a continuous PDF over the possible values of y. And of course, it's going to be different depending on what I send through the channel, right? So if I send minus 1 through the channel, then I may get, you know, minus 0.78 as the result of y, which is probably more likely for the minus 1 case than the plus 1 case. And so this is also going to lead us into starting to solve estimation problems where I'm basically trying to decide, okay, I saw this output. What was the most likely version of my input? Okay. So let's do this from first principles just to be um, super precise. So let's just do the minus one case. So the PDF, or the CDF rather, right? That's the probability that I'm less this value. So let me be really precise. This is like saying the probability that Y, which is X plus the noise, is less than this value over this, which is a different way of saying the probability that n, and here, you know, since the x is minus 1, this is like saying that this is minus 1. It's like saying the probability that noise is less than or equal to y plus 1 and x equals minus 1 over this probability. Now, since both these things are independent, basically this number here is one half. This number here, this part of it is going to be one half. And all I need to compute is this part, right? So what is the probability that the noise is less than this number? Well, I told you it was Gaussian, right? So that means that I've got a Gaussian random variable, and I want to know 
what is that probability? Well, I'd have to do this, um, you know, integral du, right? What I really care about is the PDF. So the PDF is d d y of this thing, which by the fundamental theorem of calculus is just I take this thing I put it over here, right? So what I get is one over square root of two pi sigma e to the minus y plus one squared over two sigma squared. So what did I learn? I learned that actually this is basically a Gaussian with mean equal to minus one and variance sigma squared. And the same way, if I was to do this for the positive one case, I would get another Gaussian. So kind of what I found out was that um, if I were to draw a picture, you know, here are the possible values of y. This is going to be my kind of probability axis. So I have minus one and plus one. And the PDF conditioned on minus one looks like this. And the PDF conditioned on plus one looks like this right? These are the conditional means, and the variance of each of these things is the same, sigma squared, right? So this is basically like the conditional PDF given that x equals 1, and this is the conditional PDF given that x equals minus 1. Sorry for going over the page, right? And so now I can say, okay, well, what happens if I receive a certain value? So one thing that we really care about is, um, you know, it kind of makes sense to say, okay, I'm going to set a threshold and I'm going to decide that what I sent through the channel was minus one if it's below the threshold and plus one if it's above the threshold, right? So what would be the threshold that would give me the best answer in the sense of giving me the lowest error? So, um, you know, if I put the threshold um, here, for example, then I would make an error if x was plus 1, it would be this much. And I would make an error if x was uh, minus 1, this would be the error, right? So kind of what I want to do is I want to find the value such that the sum of these two red areas is minimized, right? So um, then I could actually solve for the error. Right? I could say, what is the probability of error given that I used this threshold? Well. Actually, it would be basically, I could imagine that these things I could compute from the Q table, you know, if I actually put down a real number here. And then, you know, why wouldn't I put the threshold right at zero? Well, one reason is that maybe it's more common for ones to go through the channel than minus ones. And so maybe I should bias my decision more towards plus one than minus one. So I can, again, say that this is basically um, the probability of error. Um, given that x equals 1 times the probability of 1. This is, again, the law of total probability. How many ways, how can I get the total probability of error? It's going to be these probabilities. And then I could work out, okay, so then basically if these things are both equal to a half, then what I have is kind of like 1 half times a q function here, which is um, something, plus one half times a q function here, which is something else. And so um, if both of the uh, probabilities are equal, then it makes most sense to put tau in the middle, and then, then my probability of error would be equal to, you can kind of show uh, the q function of what one over sigma is. That's how much is under the curve, okay? But what can sometimes happen is that these two probabilities are not equal to each other. And so let me just spend the next lesson, instead of doing making this one longer, let me talk in the next short lesson about the idea behind what's called the Bayes decision rule. That's really important in machine learning.